That thirst that's in you for meaning and purpose and love is not an accident. It is time for churches from all over South Florida to function as the one, believing that we are the one body, believing that we have the one mission, believing in the one gospel, and serving the one God. I'd love for you just to share, you know, how and when your Christian faith um, really started to impact your athletic experience and, uh, and, and how that um, really was meaningful you, for you along the way. You know, if, has, it, has it always been like Christian faith has always been a part of your athletic experience? Was it maybe not so much so at, at one stage along the way and then it became so, you know, just h- however you're led to share that uh, about how you're. Christian faith has spoken into your life and your athletic experience. It'd be fantastic. Uh, it's a great question. Um, and it's funny, you know, when you reflect back, when you get to a certain age, you start thinking back throughout your career and, uh, and putting it in the context of, of faith. Um, I could say that in the early days, like in my high school and, and college days, um, while I may have been in a role a leadership type role as a quarterback or as a team captain that often put me kind of at the helm of saying the team prayer or leading the chapel service before a game. Um, As I think back on it now, I don't think I was like totally all in Mm -hmm. when when it came to faith and and true belief. I mean, just being honest, right? Um, and And I think if you were to ask my teammates, T- tell me about Chris Pertapas. Was he more likely to be the team comedian mm-hmm. or the team <laughs> spiritual leader? I think they would say the team comedian, sure. right? Yep. Um, but the really cool thing about athletics is how it brings people together. Yeah. And, and the things you experience oftentimes are not necessarily on the field. Mm-hmm. They're off the field with I the see. relationships that you build. And it wasn't until very late in my life that, you know, I had a rough patch personally, and I actually was benefited and blessed by the involvement from one of my teammates who came in to my life just to help support me, wow. uh, a player by the name, a guy by the name of Jimmy Kemp, um, who you know was a fellow quarterback, a friend during my days at Wake Forest. But Jimmy, Jimmy started to influence my life during this tough time through faith and through reinforcement of Christianity. And we would have conversations and talk through these things. And, you know, he would say, hey, Chris, I love you, brother. Like, let's pray together. Mm -hmm. And we would pray together on the phone. And and he would encourage me in a way that was really kind of an eye opener for me. So when I think back on my career, it's like, wow, I had amazing accolades, Mm -hmm. scholarships, accomplishments, things like that. But it was the friendship yep. and it was that, that connection exactly. that eventually led to something much bigger. Absolutely. And, and to this day, it's kind of my constant reminder of, of yeah. uh, the importance of God in my life and my family, yeah. the reputation that you want to kind of carry that forward, the influence that I want to have on my own children. Absolutely. And it was, it was truly from a teammate that reached yeah. out as a brother I and love expressed it. his love that way. And that's so important. I bet all of us have had that same similar experience, whether it was in the sports arena or just in life of God using someone to speak into our life and to help us, to help our minds and hearts become, become more open to God's work in our journey. So um, that's awesome. Thank you. The relationships that God uses to, um, to draw us closer to his heart. Um, Nick, you want to Yeah, Mike's got his hands full at the moment. But uh, for me personally, it was really, it, it's a journey. And I mean, very similar to what Chris just described in that I had a, uh, a mom that was very focused on ensuring that all four of us, me and my three brothers, were in church on Sundays. And I didn't really understand it at the time, why she was so focused on that, but that was really cultivating the love that I had for the Lord yeah. at a very young age. And, and as I grew older, that connection, you know, moving my way into college and now post-grad, and, and now as I raise three young children and, and my wife and I, we've made a commitment to each other to raise our children in the church yeah. and try to develop that love for, for Jesus at a very young age. Um, but certainly, uh, throughout my athletic uh, time uh, career at Duke, um, f- 
got to church sometimes, mm -hmm. not as much as probably uh, I would have liked, but certainly tried to surround myself with other you know, young men and women that were in the faith, yeah. Yeah. Um, whether it be through Fellowship of Christian Athletes and, you know, other um, opportunities, you know, going to church on Sundays and things like that. But, um, you know, it were, really was a, a journey. And I yeah. can say, you know, each day just trying to, you know, be better than the last. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Um, Michael, you want to share anything? Um, yeah, just um, with my faith walking into it, um, I believe that uh, we're kind of all brought to it and, and it gets put on our attention of when is our faith going to step up? Um, there was a time in my life, I would say during uh, baseball in college, where I would say God was in the lineup. He wasn't at the top of the lineup. And I would say like a very lukewarm relationship. Sure. Um, I think that he was definitely a part of my life mm -hmm. growing up, youth group, always had a moral compass. Our parents were great at taking, to, uh, taking us to church, being involved. It was a big part of having other great role models yeah. in our lives that weren't just all around athletics. My dad was a high school basketball coach. I was around the game all the time. But having great other people in your life, they were, they were the guidance. Um, and I would say even playing baseball and basketball in college and having guys, um, like Nick said, of like faith is huge. Uh, I think that's the hardest thing. We had such a different balance on our baseball team and trying to be a leader yeah. on your team and a captain. Um, like he would say, like a comedian, necessarily more than mm -hmm. the leader. I would say, you know, most times be a leader, a guy that's going to lead the drills and be the first guy, you know, the practice, last guy to leave type deal. But um, that's something kind of how you should look at our faith and our walk. And yeah. hey, maybe our, our first guy in and our last guy out should be the Lord. Yeah, and I don't, I don't like think it. it hit me. It was always on my heart, but it wasn't the top thing when I was in college. And right. just you know, playing two sports or, you know, how busy you are as a division one athlete, yeah. it's ridiculous. How do, how do you fit it in? Yeah. And so I, I just tell people like, as, as you're young, as you're growing through this, uh, at this age, I think really finding a way to put them at the top of your lineup will yeah. make you a lot better. And I think that was told to me, uh, actually when I was in grad school by a guy who was, a uh, the former, uh, I think CFO of the 49ers, he came and spoke to our entire FCA group at Belmont, got involved with them at, at West Point and at uh, Belmont, and um, just truly remarkable. He said, hey, when is God going to be enough for you? You know, are you going to wait till you're 25 to get him on board? Or are you going to mm -hmm. wait till you're 45, 50, all of a sudden you're 55, and you've, you've already had your family, and now they're out. Now God's okay for you? Mm -hmm. So when are you going to put them on top? And yeah. that's kind of something that's kind of stuck with me for a while. Yeah, right. You bet. Absolutely. I like it. Thank you guys so much. Any um, particular experiences stand out to you as uh, really just some of the, the, the best or better experiences as a Christian in sports, like for, for your faith? I mean, you've spoken to some of those or, you know, some of the most challenging ones. You know, what was most challenging about, you know, staying true to Jesus in the midst of college athletics or high school athletics or even coaching. I mean, because uh, it's not always easy. Um, it, does anything stand out about any one particular experience, episode, incident, or just, um, just some part of that, you know, balancing act, so to speak? Anything stand out about, you know, either the best or the hardest? Yeah, I'll, I'll go. Um, I think one of the toughest moments for me was... Uh, uh, senior year in high school or kind of leading up to my senior year in high school. And uh, my dad, my, my parents are older. My dad had me, um, I'm the youngest of nine children. Like I said, my dad was 47 when, uh, when he became a, a father for the ninth time. So for my senior year, he was just retiring um, at the age of 63. And it was supposed to be obviously a big experience for me, senior, big moment and everything like that. And like literally a month after he retired, um, he had to have quadruple bypass surgery. Uh, so here was this guy, you know, former athlete himself, 33 year veteran on the Chicago police force. I always saw him as like this statue of yeah. strength who is now completely weakened and had this surgery. So I just, I'll never forget just how challenging it was and how I had to lean so heavily on my faith. Uh, yeah. Number one, worrying about my dad getting through it worrying about my mom. Yeah. Um, I was the only one really left at home at that point. So I kind of became the man of the house, trying to go to school, you know, lead, yeah. a, lead a football team, had aspirations to go on and, and play uh, college, college football. But um, 
there were a lot of special moments during yeah. that time right. and where I really felt like the good Lord allowed me to kind of push through it. So I grew good. closer to my dad, to my mom. I saw him eventually uh, get through it. And uh, I'll never forget my first game that year. I didn't think my dad would be able to come and see me play. And sure enough, I looked over and there he was in a wheelchair you know, watching the game and, and it was a great experience and a great outcome, Fantastic. Um, but something I'll just never forget. Absolutely. Yeah. And here's the thing, Chris, we don't know right now who's watching, but I guarantee you somebody on the other side of that screen uh, is in a similar sort of experience. You know, one of their parents is struggling uh, or some, one of their loved ones is having a hard time. And uh, so I hope you're encouraged uh, to hear of God's presence with Chris through a struggle like that. Absolutely. So you bet. Somebody else? Um, I think just, um, you know, kind of overall things have been pretty blessed in my life so far. I'm still pretty young and just trying to, you know, there's been some definitely moments with injuries, I think, that I've seen yeah. people. I mean, myself, my junior year, Toya my labrum, um, and different things like that. But it, it wasn't life shattering at the moment. Mm -hmm. It just, it really stunk. It's a challenge. But it made, yeah. it made you low and challenged. Um, I think as, as we're at the age where we, um, you know, sixth through 12th grade, we were trying to figure out what's, you know, what's next. Don't, don't test the Lord and put it on winning and losing. And his results aren't necessarily so good. the results you're looking for. I remember working with a fellowship Christian group, uh, the 2016 class at West Point of football players. Uh, they're 15, they played 15 against Navy, so they, they weren't part of the win. But what they did for the program and for the people and the type of people they were as young men, um, and how they walked and their character is the reason the program is where it is today yeah. because of those guys, even though their record didn't show for it and they didn't get to beat Navy. But that, that group of young men, I'd say about 10 or 12 of them, and they're all now, um, you know, captains in the Army. And they basically are those, those are the kids that are their walk and their talk, the way they help care, have carried themselves, didn't quit through the hard times. Yeah. It just kind of showed that, that you don't test the Lord, but he does have a lot of fruit for you through your challenges and, and through yes, your blessings. For sure. And I think you need to look at those things through yeah. life. And I don't, don't think that losing is the end of the world. Exactly. And, and just come back the next day and know that it's a better day, like we Absolutely. talked about earlier, striving to be better. Absolutely, for sure. Well, I wish Mike had that advice for me when I was no, no. getting ready to go to Duke. That's a good, good word right there because I'll tell you, that's what I struggled with yeah. right there. Yeah. You're, you're coming out of high school, kind of big man on campus yeah. and getting highly recruited by various yeah, colleges. Exactly. And, uh, you know, um, you go to uh, college in that first day as a freshman, you're, you're low man on the, <laughs> you're low man on the yeah. totem pole. And yeah. you learn that real quick. And I had a couple eye open experiences real quick that kind of uh -huh. put me in my place. Yeah. But, but I think Mike nailed it. It, it. Just for me, if, and I had some s senior mentors that would come to me and say, you know, don't define yourself only by what happens yeah. on this field. Right. You know, and, and kind of the immature Christian in me at that time didn't really understand what that meant at a higher level. And that's why I'm so inspired by some of these young Christian athletes yeah, out there, sure. the Tim Tebow's, the yeah. Patrick Mahomes, the, yeah, you know, absolutely. Tobin Heath in the, in the yeah. soccer world, a girl that my daughters look up to, or, you know, Julie Ernst. I mean, you know, these are people at such a young age that have been able to identify mm -hmm. what's most important yeah. in their lives, absolutely. you know. Jesus first, everything else second. Amen. And if you can, sure. and if you can kind of follow that that kind of mantra and just have that, you know, um, maturity in your yeah. Christian faith, I think yeah. it'll just be a much more rewarding athletic career. But no, for me personally, it was just that. It was just defining myself by successes and failures on the athletic fields. And we had a lot of successes on the lacrosse field, not as many on the football field. Chris, amen, you know amen that. to that. Duke, <laughs> Duke football 20 years ago what, wasn't what it is under Cutcliffe today. Right. But um, it, was, it was just that. Yeah. It was don't define yourself only by what happens on the athletic fields. And uh, you play for someone much greater yeah, than amen. a coach or yourself. Good stuff. The interesting thing, too, just to kind of add is like, the challenges that you face as an athlete throughout your career, you don't realize it at that point in time um, that you're probably going to face several other like challenges later on in your life. For sure. And you're going to be able to reach back into those experiences and kind of pull them forward. You're, you will have learned things and lessons from the first yes. time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whether it's in your, in your job, in your family dynamic, in your marriage, whatever, raising your own children, you're going to really be able to leverage that. So I think yeah. that's one of the amazing things about athletics is, you know, when you, when you combine athletics and, and, and your spirituality and your belief in God and, and the friendships that you build, 
all those challenges just they they become part of your character you and they 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 start to shape who you are and then when you really start to leverage that to the full capacity that's when you can really start to make an impact in a much greater way which is i think what the good lord would want you to do based on the blessings that, yeah. that he's given you using the gifts yep. he's given you for his yep. glory and the good of his yep. world absolutely um I wonder if you could share with everybody watching some of the ways that uh, you live out your faith now. You know, I mean, you, you, probably, you, you might have been doing it for a long time, but right now, what are some of the ways that you're living out your faith, worship, reading the Bible, things like that, um, that you either did when you were, you know, in the midst of the athletic experience uh, or that you would encourage those watching to do that maybe you wish you had done then? Um, any of those uh, types of um, just spiritual practices, just ways of living out the faith that you might share as encouragement? Nick, you want to go first this time? Sure. Uh, so where I was 20 years ago to where I was today, two very different things. You go in my car right now, I got 88.1 Way yeah, FM yeah. blasting. I got like, you know, my Christian rock Christian music, going. Yeah. Uh, you know, the kids make fun of me at home. I got it at home on Sunday mornings. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a Friday morning uh, men's Bible study with some, some guys uh, around the, the neighborhood. Um, trying to think some other things. Um, Chris, how about you? I mean, yeah, I would say for me, um, at this point in my life, um, prayer, reflection, and uh, not having a fear to have you know, religious conversations with people is probably much more relevant and, yeah. and present than it's ever been. Sure. Um, I, I went through a period of time where, um, you know, yeah, I would pray, but like the depth of my prayer now, it's on a daily basis. And yeah. I'm, and it's not just prayer for asking of, you know, for help when things are hard. It's yeah. thank, being thankful for the goodness and yeah. being humble for, for the experiences. Sure. And and asking for forgiveness when you make mistakes and yes. asking for support to make the right choices, right? Sure. I can remember as I was you know, a little younger, you know, the emotions would get into either decisions or reactions. I try to infuse prayer into things more so that I can eliminate the emotional side of things yes. and think with, with clarity, act with clarity um, and leverage it that way. So it. it's been cool, like even talking to my mom you know, 92 years old and being able to have deeper spiritual conversations with her on the phone that I probably wouldn't have had there a few go. years ago. So as you mature, Absolutely. you start to, to lean on it a little bit exactly. more. It's been really neat For with sure. my wife, with my boys. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously one of the greatest things is, is when we made the decision to, to walk in this church on Easter Sunday a couple of years ago and uh, the welcome we received here at Grace and just recognizing that we had finally found the right, the right yes. place that we've been looking for. It. And it, uh, your leadership and just the, the, the family atmosphere, it's been fantastic. For sure. It's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> We're losing one. <laughs> um, no, just, um, just completely, uh, like you said, I think living out your gratefulness, I think the praying for the blessings we receive in life is just as important as the prayers for the needs we need in life. I think if everybody can pray every day, even if there was no troubles, if you can just pray during that stuff, it is just as important. Um, you know, I, I hear a couple of things that, you know, what we get to do in life is a, is a gift, not what we have to do. So I think yeah. a lot of people don't really kind of walk through that uh, with that, that kind of mentorship. Um, but also I think for me, um, being at West Point for such a long time, there's a saying up there that I kind of tie to the Bible, um, a little bit more is it's choosing the uh, harder right over the easier wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think something that you can look at, like when you try to incorporate the Bible messages and they're harder to, you know, encrypt or just kind of tear apart for yourself, like some of the older stories, yeah. how do we do these things? Um, but I think that's the biggest thing is when you're looking at, you know, it's okay not to do the popular thing and be in the, be in the right than do the um, popular wrong. So I think that's something that it's good to know for at that age group uh, yeah. as well. But I'm, I'm with Nick on the Way FM and the uh, Bible study group on Wednesday mornings. And, and, and to speak of that, uh, living that out, we had something the other day, actually yesterday's morning, uh, was about building each other up. Romans 15, 1 and 2. 
about how you encourage each other and build each other up. And during this time, I think more than ever, like Chris said, is now's the time to build each other up and encourage each other to really enjoy the day and make yeah. the most of it Amen. instead of looking at all the negative yeah. uh, that's out there, turning off the noise and, and yeah. making sure we can help those that are closest to us, but also those that are in our circle and our network that we can yeah. continue to move forward together through Absolutely. the Lord. And I think that's the biggest thing. So this good. Time. So good. Such good uh, guidance and insight. Um, some of y'all mentioned some of the kind of Bible stories, Bible passages. Uh, as we kind of wrap things up here, any like particular story or Bible passage or Bible verse or verses that have encouraged you in either or both your athletic experience and or your life, uh, just in general, just that you might share as encouragement for uh, all the, the students who are watching right now? Yeah, for me, I would say it's probably uh, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, and again, probably more relevant now yeah. as I mature than, than earlier in life. But, um, you know, take athletics out of the equation. Just think of life in, in general. Um, there are going to be so many moments that you're going to experience that are so challenging. Just having the, the, the confidence of knowing that, you know, through, through Christ, you're strong. You can, you can persevere. Um, you can fight through. Uh, it's it's a nice reminder. In fact, one of my sons has that T-shirt. I know that Steph Curry, you mm -hmm. know, wears periodically. <clears throat> Big Steph fan, and uh, every time I see him wear that T-shirt, I'm obviously proud. Uh, and it's a it's a reminder. Um, but yeah, that would that would probably be mine. Awesome. Yeah, love it. Well, Chris must have seen my desk because I have that one <laughs> right on my desk there at work. Yeah, and that's, uh, one. That, that's one. And I would say Hebrews 12, you know, yeah. run the race with perseverance, with your eyes fixed Thanks directly Lord upon Jesus. our Lord Jesus. Amen. You know, he is bore one. the burden of the Absolutely. cross. And, uh, you know, through him, you know, we can find we find Amen. our success. Absolutely and endurance to run, to continue to run the race. So that would certainly be one. And then yes. Psalm 23, yeah. you know, uh, the yeah. Lord is my shepherd. my shepherd. Even when we go through the darkest valley, Absolutely. you know, he restores Absolutely. our soul and uh, his rod and his staff certainly comforts me in the challenging Amen. times. So Amen. those would be the two, the, the big three for me. Yeah. Um, and uh, I certainly turn to those on a daily basis. Awesome. Awesome. So. Uh, in a, uh, Nick hit on the head with Hebrews 12. Um, that's definitely something we would attract FCA athletes up at West Point. We talk about the race all the time and how it's won. He's already won it. Just got to stay on, the, stay the course. Yeah. Um, for me, I think it's just uh, when you reread the gospel and finding different things that talk to you differently. Mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily just one verse or two verses. It's like as you constantly read through it. And some things don't stick. But I think even different times when you read the Bible, how it sticks in your life differently yeah. than at that moment that you read it five years ago. Absolutely. And that's why I think like rereading the word, even though, Hey, I've read the gospel before. Okay. You know, how does it work in your heart right now after all your, all the actions that have taken place in your life? Exactly. Like he said with athletics, athletics yep. has determined so much of what we can do in our lives and is pretty much the biggest part of my life besides God. Yeah. So how do you, how do you navigate both of those things together? And For it's sure. really yeah. keeping him first, but running that race. Like we Amen. talked about. Amen. Awesome guys. Uh, any, any final thoughts or encouragement for the uh, students watching right now? Yeah, I think, you know, mine would be, um, you know, just a couple of things. Different generation, uh, a lot of pressure, social media pressure, uh, expectations. Uh, stay true to who you are. Uh, stay true to who you are. Remember, you know, where you came from and the lessons that many people have probably given you throughout your lives, whether it's your parents, your, your siblings, your coaches, your, your teachers, your pastor. Um, pay attention to those things. Don't take things for granted. Uh, athletics is a, is a vehicle to help you achieve things in your lives that uh, can be pretty amazing, whether it's a free education or maybe you're fortunate enough to become a professional and, and work as, a, as an athlete for a living. Um, but try to block out all the unnecessary noise and peer pressures and things that may get in the way. And I think the last thing I would say is, as an athlete, it's not uncommon to work on your body every day or to work on your craft um, and to really put that time and energy into it, but put as much time and energy into your faith. And I think you'll see significant increase in the results of the other as a, a, because of that, that extra focus on your faith. That's, that's kind of my feelings. 
and I'd like to second kind of what Chris said here is, is be yourself. I think that's the biggest thing. Don't be what everybody wants you to be. Be yourself uh, through this all. I mean, you have no idea how or where God and athletics will take you. I've lived in five states and it's been incredible meeting just amazing people in churches and, and in athletics. And um, I never would have imagined in the craziest day growing up in the back, back country of uh, uh, Ohio that I would have met the people I've gotten to meet and, and be a part of some events that I never would have dreamed of. And I've got to be there. And I think that's something that don't close your close your mind to anything. Let God really guide you and, and keep your mind open to, to anything. I think it's really amazing what he can do for you if you don't close yourself and you kind of open your heart to him. Um, I think that's probably the best thing, being yourself and opening your heart to the Lord and see where he takes you. Amen. So um, one of the things you'll realize after you graduate from playing college athletics, your school knows where to find you. They're, they're always sending you correspondence to try to whether it be raise money or get you to come to games. And I recently received something from Duke and I, I thought it was exceptional. Uh, it was under the, uh, Coach Cutcliffe and it said, faith, future, family, and football. Wow. And you can kind of fill in that bottom one with anything, whether it be football, business, uh, basketball, whatever it may be, but faith right there at the top. Oh, and, and that would be my kind of you know, parting, I guess, words of wisdom to any young Christian athlete. It's just remember what's, what's first. And um, if you do that, it'll be a much more rewarding yeah. athletic career. Absolutely. And uh, don't define yourself by successes and losses on the field. You'll, there's, there'll always be one last kick, one last yeah. pass, one last lacrosse shot, whatever it may yeah. be, but your relationship with God is eternal. Amen. So. Amen. Amen. My goodness. Chris, Michael, Nick, thank you guys so much. And Eliza over there. <laughs> I'm encouraged. I hope you're encouraged, all of you who are watching right now, all the students, and maybe some parents are watching and others. Um, just lots of great uh, wisdom and insight shared t today. And uh, just you're all in different places, different experiences. And uh, some of you already feel close with God through Jesus. Others, you, others of you may not at this point. And so we just want to encourage you, if you aren't already connected with a church, to seek out a church. Um, if you are connected with a church, talk with your youth pastor or your pastor or other leaders. Uh, if you have questions or if you uh, need prayer or encouragement about anything, we just want to encourage you to find someone who can uh, share God's love with you uh, because he loves you more than we can ever even begin to imagine. And we want you to know that. And we just want to encourage you. So let's, uh, let's close with a brief prayer. Uh, let's pray. Father, thank you so much uh, for these guys and for their experiences, Lord, and for the way that your hand has been on them through their journeys and has uh, brought their hearts close to yours, God. We thank you for every person watching right now. In this moment, right now, God, you're speaking to, uh, to your children. And so we thank you for that. And we just ask, God, that you will um, make it clear that you're with us and that you are the one who gives us strength. You're the one who rescues us, God, in this life uh, through Jesus. And we just just give you thanks and praise for that. So be with us and keep us and bless us, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks again, guys. Take care.